Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's transcribed episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is the second part of a story entitled The Jewel Mystery of Channel Island. Several jewel robberies have occurred at the exclusive Bonaire Hotel on Channel Island. So far, neither the robbers nor the jewels have been found. Officer Manigan and Patrolman Dan Garrett, who is really the Blue Beetle, have been assigned to the case. Shortly after their arrival at the hotel, a Mrs. Thomas, one of the guests, reports the theft of her jewel case containing a fortune in gems. While Mrs. Thomas, Mike Manigan, Groggins, the house detective, and Mr. Halstead, the hotel manager, are discussing the theft, the Blue Beetle appears and announces that the jewels are in that very room. As our story ended, the fire gong in the hotel was ringing. Groggins had dashed out of the room, and the Blue Beetle dived headfirst through the window into the sea a hundred feet below. As our story opens today, a heavy thunderstorm is gradually diminishing. A short distance from the Bonaire Hotel, a figure emerges from the water. Whew, that was a high dive. <laughs> yeah, lucky I learned to dive and swim well at college. Phew. <sighs> I wonder what Grogan thought when he found out the fire going was a false alarm. I wanted to separate him and Halstead to discover which had the jewel. Now I know. Now, now to get back to the hotel without being seen and rejoin Manigan in my true character of Dan Garrett. <laughs> Poor Mike. He let the blue beetle slip through his fingers again. Oh, hello, Danny. Hello, Mike. <laughs> Eating again? Uh, say, where have you been? Down by the waterfront. I was looking for you. We've had a bit of excitement while you were gone. Is that so? Is that so? <laughs> We've had a robbery, a forced fire alarm, and I almost captured the blue beetle. Again? Yeah, but he slipped out of me fingers and dived through his death, the poor devil, out of Horstead's office window. Right through the window pane he dived. Huh. Say, uh, sit down, and I'll have the waiter bring you an order of this chicken. Ah, uh, that isn't chicken, Mike. That's squab. Squab, is it? <laughs> I thought it was a baby chick. Oh, that's a young pigeon. Pigeon? Oh, that's what all them pigeons is for, out back. Did you say pigeons out back? Sure, a big roost full of them. Hmm. Say, do you know something, Danny? What, Mike? I've got me suspicions of Halston. The manager of this hotel? Sure. I've been putting two and two together. And what's the answer? Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach? Yes. Yeah. He came here from a hotel at Virginia Beach. That's right. Recommended by the owner of the hotel he used to manage. Right again. Well, now, uh, if he could scare people away from this hotel and drop a hint or two about the beauties of Virginia Beach, he might be able to drum up a little trade for his old boss. Good reasoning, Mike. But what about the stolen jewels? Oh, he could hide them a while and later return them to the owner's. Anonymously. Uh, anonymously. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, you may be right, Mike. Well, good night. I'll see you in the morning. Uh, you go to bed? I've got some figuring to do. Figuring? Yep. I'm going to put two and two together and see what I get. <laughs> My radio locator indicates the pearls are not far away. The closer I get to the dovecote, the stronger the signal I get. What's that? Someone coming out of the dovecote and a dozen, 14, 15, 16, 20 pigeons whirling up into the sky. 
Now they're heading for the mainland. The radio locator signal is fading. I was right. Those pigeons are carrying the stolen jewels to a hideout on the mainland, and that figure stealing away is... Yeah, good evening, stranger. Beautiful moonlight night after storm. Uh, yes, it is. Say, uh, can you row a boat? Yeah, I reckon I can. Been pulling an oar now on for 60 years. Row me out to that sea plane in a hurry. I'll give you five dollars. Been to a masquerade party at the hotel? A masquerade? Yeah, I see you got on a blue suit and a mask. I kind of thought maybe... Don't you... think, man, act. Got to get out that seat plane in a hurry. Oh, that that's Cyrus Worthington's I, plane. I don't care whose plane it is. I'm going to borrow it. Say, if you're drunk, mister, it's joyriding. And if you're sober, it's thievery. I wouldn't do it if I was you, mister. You see, I'm the sheriff. Well, if you can row faster than I can swim, come and get me. <laughs> signal. Lucky I got a chance to handle the Thomas necklace yesterday when Halstead got it out of the safe for Mrs. Thomas. Those radioactive crystals I inserted inside the pearls leave a perfect trail. There are the pigeons silhouetted against the sky. Ah, they're, they're spiraling down to those woods. Ah, now they've disappeared. I'll have to put this plane down in that cove there and trail the pigeons by daylight. By that time, the thief may have arrived to claim the jewels. Oh, hello, Danny. Hello. Where are you? In a seaplane along the coast somewhere. I'm in the Blue Beetle costume, and I'm talking to you over the Blue Beetle portable wireless telephone. Are you all right? Sure. I found the jewels, and I'm waiting for the thief to turn up in the morning. Oh, where's Mannigan? Still on the island. Now, look. I want you to wire him from me, as Dan Garrett, to Shadow Duggan. Got that? Yes, yes, I've got it. I've got to make Mannigan believe I return to the mainland to follow clues. clue. Understand? Perfectly, Danny. Okay, Doc. If this case works out the way I think it will, you and I are going to celebrate with a big mess of squad. Hey, where's your partner this morning, Mannigan? Oh, he went ashore last night. <laughs> Walked out on you, huh? Oh, not Danny. He's working on a clue. How did he get to the mainland? Swim? Ain't no boats running. <laughs> Danny has ways of getting around. He's a smart lad, that one. Say, maybe you two ain't cops. Maybe you two are the jewel thieves. And maybe your grandmother was queen of the Eskimos. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm going ashore. What for? Why, uh, there's some equipment I want to get. I'll go with you. No, you better stay here on guard. Danny wired me to meet him on the mainland. Oh, well, okay. Come on, then. We can just make the boat. I've got a hunch we're on the right track. Me boy, you've said a mouthful. Yeah, the chief ought to be here soon. Yeah. Sure made a haul this time. Ought to bring a hundred grand. Ah, no, no, not from a fence. No, we don't need a fence to sell them pearls and diamonds. They ain't mounted as strong as a necklace. You can sell them individual. Quiet, quiet. Somebody's coming. Hey, Bugsy. Yeah? It's okay, boss. How many pigeons arrived? Twenty-two. Good. Did you take the little silk bags off their legs? Sure, boss, sure. They're all here. And the jewels, too. Well, I buried the set in the back of the dovecote. Let me have the jewels and we'll scram out of here. Where are we going, boss? Rio. We're all going to have a long vacation. But not in Rio. The Blue Beetle. Yes, yes the Blue Beetle. Halstead said he was. Halstead was wrong. As long as there are crooks to be caught, the Blue Beetle will never die. Oh, no. We'll see if he can stand up against this. Never phased him. Now, Grogan, see if you can stand up against this. And this. No, grab him, boys. 
Hit him on the head. Come on, Monty. Let's scram oh. out of here. I ain't fighting with those ghosts. I ain't. All right, boys. Raise your hands for the teacher. The cop. The cop. Hello, Officer Mannequin. Just in time to arrest the jewel thieves of Channel Island. Well, I'll be. If it ain't the blue beetle or his ghost. Well, get your hands up and I'll slip the handcuffs on them. Sorry, Mannequin. But you can't handcuff a ghost. Besides, the blue beetle has other work to do. So long, Mannequin. I'll be haunting you. And so Dan Garrett, as the Blue Beetle, exposed a clever scheme and rounded up a gang of crooks, but let his partner, Manigan, get credit for the job. The moral of this story is, be ever on the alert. Think things through. And when success comes, let your friends share it with you. What new adventures await the Blue Beetle in his crusade against crime? What new problems will he have to solve? These questions will be answered in the next transcribed episode of The Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.